very good. All right. We cannot hear. You want to go ahead and start the show? I think we should wait for our, let's give it a few minutes. Uh, okay. Welcome everyone to Kelly and Kelly Radio .com. Today we have a special guest, Andy Hoffman, and we will talk about the Bitcoin sphere, crypto sphere, and what's going on out there and have a great conversation regarding the Bitcoin for sure. And I want to say that you can earn residual income at the Nexus Rewards Direct Sales or earn income as an affiliate at the Nexus University or Nexus Partners. This conversation is sponsored by Nexus, and that is with two X's, an open source decentralized ERC-20 token on the Ethereum network with a 15-second teleportation and the internal token for Nexus rewards increasing buyer demand with every transaction while uplifting and supporting top cryptocurrencies usage and utility. Take it away, Kelly. All right. And she can even do a combo of those. That's very, that's, uh, she's got some talent there. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Today is the 18th of September. And like Kelly said, this is the Kelly and Kelly Show. We're empowering people to take back power um, being in their own monetary system. And I'm Kelly B. And, yes, we have a special guest today. Um, he is a returning guest, Andy Hoffman. He's a financial, his financial market experience spans nearly three decades. Um, he was a chartered financial analyst. He has uh, worked in the stock and bond trading and he uh, worked on both the buy and the buy and the sell side analyst, um, most notably covering um, uh, equities at uh, Salmon Smith and Barney from 1999 to through 2005. From 2005 to 2017, he worked in the precious precious metals industry for six years in mining and six as the market director for Miles Franklin Precious Metals. A Bitcoin enthusiast since 2015, he left Miles Franklin in two, August 2017, so just recently, to start his own subscription-based website which is CryptoGoldCentral.com, and I'll share that with you guys in a minute. So let me switch over my screen, and we want to welcome Andy to the call. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Uh, thank God I found uh, at the last second I saw that this is webinar format, so I made it just in time. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> we're glad to have you back, and um, you know, I know that last time we had talked to you, you were really starting to get involved in cryptocurrency and look at it, and um, that's just fantastic because you know there's a lot of people in the precious metal um, industry that are that just don't want that change or whatever and they don't see the impact of decentralization and all so we're glad to see that you were uh, visiting the space of cryptocurrency which we all tremendously believe in and that you have actually really stepped up to go um, your own way and so tell us what really what was the real driving force for you to really step into the crypto space um, in full capacity Right. Well, if you go back to uh, 2013, I mean, I've been, I just spent the last six years in the precious metal bullion industry uh, as a marketing director. And, you know, I've been a leader in the precious metal community going all the way back to 2002. And speaking of the virtues of gold and silver and also the manipulation of the markets and, and the fiat currency system underlying it, et cetera. Uh, but it wasn't really until uh, late 2015 where I really started to understand the virtues of Bitcoin, and I started to heavily invest in it and talk about it. Uh, at even in my role as marketing director at a bullion firm, I started to talk about it inordinately. So, and then we, I got introduced to Jeff Schreiber, uh, who you know found out of me through Miles Franklin, and we were I was first on your show last July, I believe when the price was about five or six hundred dollars, and we were talking about how much it was going to change the world, and look where we are a year, uh, a little over a year later. Uh, and as far as what's gone on with, you know, my, my business, it's just as the, this, you know, super fast technological change has occurred over the past year and a half, it just occurred to me that I really wanted to spend more of my time focusing on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And while I still believe very much in gold, I have a lot more interest in crypto because I think it's changing the world. And so what I did was 
just, I mean, a week ago, I've been in business now for a week. I left Miles Franklin last month, and I started my own subscription-based website called CryptoGoldCentral.com, where I uh, write uh, on a daily basis content about principally about Bitcoin and, and, and uh, secondarily about gold and a lot of the things, you know, uh, tie them together. Uh, but it's just been the most liberating thing I've ever done because I work for myself now, and, and I get to talk about what I really love to talk about, which is cryptocurrency. And so, again, to subscribe, you just go to CryptoGoldCentral.com. Uh, it's $225 per year. I will be uh, offering a seven-day free trial starting in the next few days, and, and uh, you can see, get to my Twitter handle at uh, Andy underscore Hoffman underscore CG. And uh, now... For my third appearance on the Crypto uh, K and K show, I'm looking forward to it. Wow, absolutely fantastic! So um, we we're right there with you. We love talking about cryptocurrency every day. We just say we're always on vacation. That's Kelly's favorite thing to do. But you know what? What a lot of challenge that a lot of us face is. You know, Bitcoin's been out there really for, you know, nine years now, eight, eight, nine years. And um, we've still got people that um, either don't know about it or have heard about it. What is your, what do you explain to people what the, what the um, asset value is of cryptocurrency? Of course, we know decentralization, that's a big, big key. But most people don't even understand centralized and decentralized systems because we haven't been trained, you know, we've been uh, brainwashed in our, in our schooling, right? So and the, only those that have been self-educated and been teaching and paying attention um, realize this. And even though people say, yeah, we know there's a crash coming potentially and they don't understand that it's in a centralized system. So what what is it? How do you go about educating people that are very new coming into this space? Right, and it's hard because, you know, I've been talking about early adoption uh, a lot lately because there's so few people that have that have any interest in this, and mostly because they're told everything is fine and they believe in the nanny state. Uh, they even believe in the banks that have done so much to destroy their lives just because of inertia uh, and welfare and all kinds of things that are hard to get over, let alone the transition of, to being your own banker uh, and taking care of your, your own finances the way people did. You know, when the country first started and there wasn't a government backstop uh, to, you know, hand out helicopter money whenever it was needed. But generally speaking, I, I try to tell people that, you know, look around you at what fiat currency has done. I mean, your cost of living is exploding. The wealth inequality is exploding. Uh, the social unrest, the political tensions, the geopolitical tensions, uh, this terrible economy, real wages are down. I mean, these are the symptoms of, uh, of the end of a fiat currency regime. This is what I, as a monetary expert, have been talking about for 15 years. That's why I got into gold 15 years ago. And uh, why it's, it's so liberating to see something like Bitcoin come around, where it's not just the, uh, the wealthy that can participate in this. This is for everyone to participate in. Everyone can have a better life. And uh, everyone can probably get a lot wealthier if they, if, if they you know, educate themselves of what's going on here and, and participate. Uh, because, you know, when you talk about value, look, what's value in the real world now has been so, so distorted by all the printed money and manipulated markets. I mean, governments are now telling you that they support the stock and bond markets every day, uh, let alone hold down the precious metal markets so to the point where you've had all this gross misallocation of capital. You've had all the money has been siphoned from the 99% into the hands of a few, and this kind of, you know, dead economy that featuring exploding debt. And so I just say, I mean, look around you at what's going on and, and realize that there's now an alternative. And, uh, you know, I talk constantly, and these are things I all write about on my website, but I've been writing about it before. For instance, I call it the ultimate uh, lift, uh, litmus test. Fiat versus crypto versus gold, because I've always told people, you know, when you're considering buying gold, and most people have never seen gold or touched gold, they say, well, get your hands on a gold or a silver coin and put it in one hand, and then the other hand, put a quarter. And a quarter feels like a feather, and it should because it's worth about as much as a feather. It's completely worthless. In fact, the government spends more money printing it up than it's actually worth, uh, whereas once you hold a gold or silver coin, you realize how heavy it is, how beautiful, how lustrous. And when you read about the history, you realize how, how scarce and how difficult it was to get it on the ground, out of the ground. With crypto, I say, look, go to the bank, 
and say you want to do a bank wire, uh, let alone if you want to do it over the weekend or of size or, or God forbid, or you want to do it in international markets where you have all the government uh, capital controls and IRS regulations to deal with uh, and all the fees that get involved in this that can really pile up. And I said, then why don't you get yourself a hardware wallet and send yourself a little Bitcoin or receive a little Bitcoin and realize that it could be Sunday night in the middle of the night and it could be a million dollars worth and it'll still take a few seconds and cost you almost nothing and the government has nothing to do with it and there's no fees involved. So again, it's just when people start to realize how much more efficient and empowering and valuable this scarce, I mean, talk about, say, Bitcoin, which is, you know, has this, this deflationary monetary policy and people... You know, there's a reason why it's spreading virally, and I expect that, you know, this year, which was the coming out party for cryptocurrency, and particularly Bitcoin, is going to be nothing compared to what we see next year. Yeah, you know, just look at what happened on September 15th when China came out. You know, the people still react to what the government says. So China came out and they're going to block the ICOs or, you know, they're going to ban the exchanges or whatever. And within, you know, a couple of days, uh, it was just a great opportunity to buy as it as it rushed the price. That the, those that were scared that don't truly believe, they want to kind of get their feet in. Or, or maybe was that a manipulation of, of the governments themselves so they could... Uh, lower the price so they could buy more. What what, what are your, some of your thoughts that, that drove that down, really? And what was what do you think is the real driving force behind the government? So are they trying to do a last ditch effort to stop it, which we know it's not stoppable. Even if they brought Bitcoin down, there's so many altcoins out there, and the industry itself is so big. Other applications are coming out. So what do you think that um, actually they're they're uh, their real reason behind the manipulation is? Well, I think you've pretty much got all the main main uh, issues out there. And, you know, again, I've been writing like crazy, especially now that it's a full-time job. And, yes, my, my full-time, you know, Crypto Gold Central launched last Sunday. So I, it was two days before Jamie Dimon made his ridiculous comment, and then two more days, not even two days, before the Chinese made their announcement. Uh, which had been long suspected, but no one really actually believed it until it happened. And keep in mind that the Chinese, on in just four weeks from now, are holding their 19th National Congress. It's a once-in-five-year event. It's probably the most important political event in the world, certainly in China. Uh, this is where uh, Xi Jinping, or Xi Jinping, wants to get re-elected for another five years. And, and every time you're in front of these, these, these big meetings, you have all kinds of draconian things announced. I mean, they've even ordered the uh, they've even ordered all their like stockbrokers to make sure the market doesn't go down. So there's a, you know a lot of political political stuff going on in front of this, and no one is really even talking about it, even though it's it's definitely a factor. But the bigger factor, it's quite obvious, is that the Chinese are terrified with their Ponzi economy of all the money that's been fleeing. They've had massive amounts of capital flows out of China for the past few years, you know, to the tune of more than a trillion dollars. Uh, and the Bitcoin is certainly uh, not not helping that trend because it's it's a great way to move capital around uh, outside of capital controls. And so, you know, earlier this year, the Chinese closed the exchange. Well, they didn't close them, but for five months, they said you can't uh, withdraw your your Bitcoin. And then they instituted some AML KYC rules, and and it only took a few months before they probably realized that they're not working. And so now they're shutting the exchanges down. You know, you throw in the ICO craze, which is far crazier in China than it even is here. And, you know, with this big meeting coming up, they had re many reasons to, to do this. Um, and as you said, you know, are the governments just uh, trying to knock the price down to buy it? Well, you know what? I've been talking about that quite a bit because, you know, I did a tweet maybe, uh, I don't know, a couple of five days ago where I said Bitcoin being this huge, unregulated but highly liquid market represents the biggest insider trading opportunity in history because you have so much fear in this space there's so many people that don't understand it they're scared of hard work they're scared of government particularly scared of this bad actor the chinese government whenever they talk so you know for a government that tells you that they're buying up the stock market and bond market would it would it be the you know the craziest thing to think that they are just you know creating these quote, negative events so they can get a big drop on volume so that they could buy it up? Absolutely. I mean, there's plenty of people out there that are trying to, you know, to, to, to uh, buy up positions in this deflationary currency 
that's taking over the world. So it's probably a little of all these things. Uh, but as I've been wrote as it happened, and I certainly am writing with exclamation points now, the world doesn't need China. Uh, so I should say Bitcoin doesn't need China to go up. It never did. Uh, I tweeted last week. It's not uh, Chinese exchanges are not even in the top hundred reasons why Bitcoin hit five thousand. Because it's not, it's, as you said, it's a decentralized system. It doesn't need uh, governments to help it out. It doesn't want governments to help it out. And in this case, this particular government has done more damage than any other. So good riddance uh, if we can get rid of China. I don't think we've gotten rid of them permanently. And they may well have been buying up Bitcoin, as I said. But this is certainly a good thing. And it only, as you said, took a few days for the market to realize, who cares if they close their exchanges? I'm with him on that because uh, I'm going to say they're, they're really just, it's just a matter of this. Uh, we get like Jamaica coming up now, right? Jamaica will just show up and then China will be like left out if they continue this way. And it's nothing but a benefit. It's nothing but positive news. We don't look at it as a negative thing at all. You know, it's, it's actually a good, good thing for all of us. Uh, in the cryptocurrency space as we continue to uh, increase our abundance. And as you said, um, many don't know yet, but we have the numbers and it's a 0 0.08. I've heard from, um, from uh, Cliff High. And then I've heard, I've seen the numbers at from Bob Wood, put it down and he uh, went over this one day on one of our core calls and broke it down. It was 0 0.1. Five, I think is what he said. So it's like a, a percent of people that even have a Bitcoin wallet and are using cryptocurrency. So. <laughs> All right. I, 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 saw, I, I saw something today that said there are only 300,000 Bitcoin wallets in the world that have more than $5,000 worth in them. And of course, you know, most of those wallets probably have very little more than 5,000. So it's really probably concentrated now in a, in, a, in a very few hands. The vast majority of people have never, I mean, I can, look, I've been in the gold business for 15 years, and I'd say that very few people know anything about gold, or let alone that you can invest in it or would want to. And gold has been around for 5,000 years. But as far as I, I'm, I, I see around me, no one knows about Bitcoin. And the only time, you know, people who kind of know what I do may say, you know, they see the price go up and they may say, hey, what's the deal with this Bitcoin? That's about the most knowledge that you'll get out there. So, you know, when I say that this is early days and we're early adopters. It's uh, the understatement of the century. I, I wrote an article the other day about it saying, you know, in 1995, there were just 16 million users of the Internet, 1995. And that number doubled in 1996, 97, 98, 99, 2002, 2007, 2012. And we're about to double again to 4 billion, 4 billion people in the next uh, two years or so. So again, it's, it's, I think we're, we're that early. And again, when you have this kind, I call it the evil troika of Washington, Wall Street, and the mainstream media it's, uh, manipulating markets and printing money and, and propaganda and saying that, that gold's a barbarous relic and, and Bitcoin is for, is for money launderers and murderers and, you know, because it threatens the status quo. Uh, but unlike gold, which is, it's not as easy for it to fight back, uh, Bitcoin, people are fighting back, and it's really, really easy for the average person to get involved. And uh, I really think that the adoption is really starting to skyrocket. And I think even 12 months from now, look, again, think of where we were when we did our first call uh, back in July of last year when the price was 600 bucks, and everyone's worried about, I don't know, the Bitfinex hack, and no one could care less about Bitcoin. And look at now, it's, you got central banks and leading bankers and the Bank of International Settlements all talking about it and the Wall Street Journal is every day writing an article about what's wrong with Bitcoin because it threatens them. Everyone knows now in just a year's time that Bitcoin threatens them. And now we just got SegWit. And SegWit probably a year from now is going to generate these incredible amounts of scaling solutions across the entire cryptocurrency space that are going to make it even more valuable and usable. And, uh, and it's just going to be something that spirals out of control. Uh, so for the people that are desperately trying to hold on to the status quo, I don't think they've ever come across a technology tsunami like this. Yeah, you know, well, we're re we rebound so much. We're just the 
the short time that it takes when news comes out to when we we come back as the people. I always say the powers and the people, and uh, we're actually standing in that power now, and we're we, we're starting to understand the decentralization. And you made a key point here. There's a there are enough people that realize what's going on, and if anybody's read the book Digital Gold, you'll see the the strongness that held uh, you know the first four years of the e building a holding Bitcoin together to make sure that there could be an ecosystem built and carry on is fantastic. It's, it's actually comical to see all that happened in those early, those very, very early adopters that that knew about decentralization, those techies that had been looking for, you know, a decentralized currency where, you know, I didn't even, wasn't even in that space at that time and didn't really comprehend it even after being a banker for 15 years, you know, because we're not taught that when you're inside the system. But look at how fast things are recovering now. I mean, it's almost like, oh, they, the, the government said, what, who cares? You know, pe people are realizing, starting to realize, at least in our, our us early adopters, that you don't, it doesn't matter what they say you don't have to be under that control. So people, once people realize, you know, I don't really have to be um, uh, using a government controlled money, I can go out here and use this decentralized. I think that's a big message that once that light bulb goes off for people that they, you know, gosh, we don't really have to be using that that debt money and I can create value. That's, see, that's one thing we're doing here at Nexus is showing people how position them in cryptocurrency so they can see how their value can increase just by being in the space. So that's one big thing that we that when that light bulb goes off on people that we got to keep turning the wheels in their head and showing them you don't have to stand in that centralized space. So I, I do believe we need to kind of talk about that more. Yeah, well, people are just not used to um, being independent. They have been throughout history, and, and the greatest breakthroughs in uh, mankind have been at times where people are at their most independent. But this is what fiat currency has fostered. It has fostered, it has fostered a frogs in a pot syndrome where you are the frog and you don't realize it. You think you're being taken care of, uh, but the government is really siphoning your money away from you and, and, and destroying your way of life. But they are promising that they will uh, give you handouts, and so people just get lazy and apathetic. And in a country like the United States, which has had the reserve currency, it's particularly so, uh, and in many Western countries. But you know, there's so many countries in the world where it's the complete opposite, where they are, where they have to uh, fight to survive on a daily basis. And those are the countries where actual, not in, you know, here it's mostly investors for now. Uh, but in other parts of the country, of the world, people realize that they need this. That this is their actual way to uh, to get to to get up and uh, and 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 take care of their own lives and make their lives better, because the governments are you know have complete control over them. So I think you know people just don't understand that the Bitcoin price is going up for many reasons, not just because of in, in wealthy investors. It's because this is the first. This is the first. Look, I've said that this is the most important invention of our lifetime, uh, you know, after the internet is Bitcoin, and uh, you know, arguably, it will have a bigger impact over time because it's the first time in history where people can avoid the government, uh, you know, the world destroying fiat currency systems. And really, you know, again, people just have to realize how fast the adoption is is going, and uh, where it's going to be next year and the next year. It, it's truly, you know, I've been in, in my world. It's always been the gold world. You know, we're going to wait for the system to collapse under its own weight, and then you know, gold will go up, and I guess we'll be quote happy. But you know, I couldn't see any other way until I until this came along, where I realized there is a better future. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a lot of dislocation as we tra trans uh, transition over to it, but it really is the, the first time I've seen an opportunity for the people to actually win, to take back their lives, and have a uh, and have a, a and have uh, sound money and uh, and smaller government because again you know the governments think about it how much how much tax revenues are they already losing to crypto and what if what what if what when crypto gets really big and I pick a time three years from now how much tax revenues will they lose they're going to have two choices hyperinflation or smaller government both of which favor the ninety nine percent that have been you know under pressure for so long and so. It's just and really, really exciting. As they, yeah. as they increase the debt money, as they continue to do this, it just does something better for the Bitcoin. I mean, as yeah. they 
use more and more of that actually helps. All yeah. Well, again, they're, 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 they're sealing their own demise. And, you know, again, us early adopters are the benefactors of it because, you know, whether you bought it because you wanted appreciation or you, or you wanted to save your life, like if you live in Venezuela, you're going to benefit because, again, the government has two choices. Get smaller, which is great for us, or hyperinflate, which is great for us. And, you know, fortunately, they're going to do both. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you had made a comment, too, that um, a lot of the power behind um, the Bitcoin growing so much, too, is uh, countries that you that see the benefit of it. Well, you got or and even take the unbanked. I was reading a couple months ago that uh, the 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 countries and and the people that are unbanked really have the the largest growing economies, um, and their economies grow at a, a large percentage, about thirty percent. Now, when you put a decentralized currency on top of that, now they've opened it up to where they can actually. Uh, you know, work with other countries. And so, and Andreas Antonopoulos talks about how they're going to be the ones that really drive it forward. And, and as you mentioned earlier, Bitcoin does, it, it doesn't discriminate. Cryptocurrency doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care if you're rich or poor or where you live. Any, everybody has equal opportunity. And um, so that's going to be a huge impact because in a government centralized held back economy which we're used to living in uh, the the economy pretty much doesn't exist I mean we know it's manipulated those of us that understand that now so um, the the rate at which it is moving is really fast and even though the, uh, those of us that have been in it feel like sometimes we feel like it's not moving that fast but on a day-to-day -day basis it really is would you agree oh it's just incredible when you think of the things we were worrying about you know just a few months ago and, uh, you know, again, like the scaling debate is just a perfect example of it. It seemed like this endless impasse that could never be changed. If you ask any of the smartest people in the, the smartest people in the, in the Bitcoin universe, they'd say there's no way we're going to get SegWit. And if you ask them also, what, what, what do they think would happen with a hard fork? They said a contentious hard fork, it would completely split the network and, and end the whole Bitcoin experiment. And it didn't take too long for all that to change. I mean, we had the whole... You know, the, the height of that, I guess, would you'd say was in March. And it was only two months later where Charlie Lee pushed SegWit through on Litecoin. And then another two months later before we had it on Bitcoin. And the fact is that it doesn't matter whether you're the Chinese government or you're bad actors with, like, miners or, or anyone who has a motivation uh, against the will of the Bitcoin network, the thousands of users, the tens of thousands of users inside of it, you're going to be eaten up quickly. And so technological solutions are created quickly, like, you know, say the, the Bcash, they, you know, they're going to have no replay attack, uh, protection, and the last second someone came in with this fix that, uh, that made it so that there was, uh, or, you know, when, when we were having the, uh, the universal, the, U, the UASF, the user activated software, and it was butting up against the SegWit 2X SegWit implementation because they were incompatible, and then a guy came up with a fix just out of the blue. Just like the New York agreement just came out of the blue to break the impasse. The point is these things, that while they're very painful, like just, just think of what was going on last week. It was only on Friday. I mean, today's Monday morning. It was Friday morning where Bitcoin was more than $1,000 lower and everyone is, is panicking that the world is over. I wasn't, by the way, because I, I don't really see the Chinese as a threat. But see how fast it goes from a problem to it doesn't matter. We're moving forward. And, and that's. That's something I have not been able to see in the gold market after 15 years, but in the Bitcoin market, things change almost always for the better in lightning on that lightning periods of time. You're absolutely right, and it all comes back to we realize that we're the we're the driving force here. We the people are the driving force, and we're just like we're just pushing everybody else aside. So I mean, it's pretty incredible. I want to let anybody know that wants to come on and ask Andy any questions or make any comments to uh, raise your hand, and I'll unmute your mic. I would like to unmute Jeff's uh, Jeff Schreiber's mic. He wants to give you a congratulations here. Uh, let me see if he's available to do that. Hey, Jeff, I've unmuted you. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hi, Andy. Uh, it's been a couple of months or so since we got together. And, uh, yeah, so it was much... great, great meeting you after, uh, yeah. after a year of emailing. Yeah, it was fun. It was a, it was a fun time. Uh, 
I'm uh, really, really healthy now. My, you know, I finished that program and I'm, I'm just doing great. Uh, you know, I was telling Kelly I became a vegan, and uh, Kelly was uh, very inspirational in that. And uh, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I mean, I just feel like uh, the, the sky is the limit when it comes to you know where we can go with this because it's it's uh, it's it's all about us, as Kelly was just saying. It's about you know, it's really about people power. And to me, that's one of the most exciting things, and, it, and the world needs it so badly, you know, I mean, more so than ever, because we just have, you know, the people that are running the governments and the banks, are, they just, to me, they just seem like a bunch of fools that are just, you know, you know pulling their, you know, what was that called? Uh, wag the dog. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just they don't know where they're going, and it's, uh, you know, and they, and they see the end is in sight. And uh, it's here for us to take advantage of it. So yeah. well, uh, see, seeing uh, seeing Jamie Dimon make his comments. By the way, when his company was one of the leaders of the Ethereum Alliance, <laughs> yet he's calling Bitcoin a fraud. Uh, to see that just mere days after saying that, the price is probably about to go above that level. And frankly, it only went down because he was fortuitous enough to have the Chinese announcement maybe a day after he said it. Uh, just shows you that these bankers are, uh, as I say, flailing at windmills like Don Quixote and trying to stop Bitcoin, because look, if, the, if, the, if the Chinese government is literally banning Bitcoin throughout the country and the price is going up, it should show you that it's the people that matter. And it's not the Chinese people, it's the whole world of people. This network is impervious and it's going to change the world and it's going to you know, cause a cryptocurrency revolution, as I call it, I, I did something a few months ago called the ultimate monetary death cross. I think that's going to, I think it started and I think it's going to occur en masse within the next two or three years where the majority of people realize that crypto is a superior solution to fiat. And uh, we're going to have, you know, just tens of hundreds of billions of dollars of investment in making these networks better. Uh, for instance, ICOs, you know, there's all, it's the, the, the popular, you know, the common knowledge that they're bad and, and, uh, and have to be stopped and, you know, yeah, but meanwhile, it's the Chinese government who's like the biggest fraud of all that's trying to stop it. But, you know, the thing is, I wrote something the other day saying, I think ICOs are the financing of the future. I think decentralized financing is going to get rid of, you know, I think stocks and bonds have had their time. They've been bastardized and, and monetized and, and, and used as a vehicle to make the, the rich richer. And uh, I think the future is going to be decentralized financing, except with all the new money that's going to rush into the sector, it's going to become a real legitimate industry. Uh, just like Bitcoin is a real legitimate currency, even though it's decentralized, that that's what's going to happen in financing. So the people, the Jamie Diamonds of the world are going to become, uh, either they're going to become worth useless or they're going to adapt to a world where Bitcoin is their primary or crypto is their primary business. Uh, not this, this legacy criminal uh, fiat system. And, and the same goes for the world's biggest central banks, including the Federal Reserve and the PBOC. Mm. Did you see that uh, one of your congressmen has actually proposed a, uh, something in Congress to uh, leave Bitcoin transactions that are below a certain amount just a alone and not be, uh, you know, not be under the... Uh, you know, watch of the IRS. I don't know if you saw that Jared Polis from Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I mean, but again, I mean, that's great that they did it. But the point is, it's, it's, it's just such a silly concept. They can't, they can't track these transactions at all, let alone the ones for coffee. I mean, just think about how many transactions we're talking in the chain, especially now that you have so many cryptos that are anonymous. And now that we have uh, SegWit, we'll probably have anonymous fungible Bitcoin in the next year or two also. Uh, so it's not even, they, they don't even have the, the means to, to, they don't even have the capital to, to track like the people, the manpower and the computer power, even if they wanted to. Uh, but yes, it's, it's, it's kind of a step in the right direction of legitimacy, which is great because governments are recognizing, hey, it's a Democrat and a Republican. They're recognizing that it's legitimate, just like the, the Chinese government and Jamie Dimon are recognizing uh, Bitcoin is legitimate, but they can't. They have no power to monetize to to uh, to tax uh, crypto transactions, and they're going to have even less power as the technology advances in a very short period of time. And that's what I mean. They are going to lose so much tax revenue that they're going to be forced to shrink these governments dramatically. So, good thing for the for humanity.
Yeah, you know, it's, it'll be great when people really realize that the government is just a corporation. It really doesn't matter. We can move forward and, and create private sector again, which is really what we need to do. And I see Nexus Partners being a big part of that, too, and bringing back small community uh, businesses and those type of things. So we're going to have a big impact there, too. But um, the uh, we also have another hand up. So let me... Uh, open up, I believe he, I'm not sure how he'll pronounce it, but Rezer Khan Zablin. Let me see. I'm trying to unmute your mic, and it's not unmuting, so you're probably going to have to uh, just type your question in the question box, and we'll get that to Andy. But yeah, again, just incredible power to the people. We just have to keep standing there. And, um, as, you know, as Andrea says a lot, too, and um, that the governments, they're going to, you know, they're going to fight it or, you know, that whatever. I, I believe that when we see governments trying to step in now, Congress or whatever, uh, you know, the, the corporate the corporate BS, then it's just their little last little ditch efforts to try to, you know, make us believe that they have authority over us still. And, you know, I'm, I'm way out there when it comes to, you know, no authority, and I don't want to get off on that, on that part of it. But, again, that's just another awakening moment that brings over to this decentralized arena that we're in. Um, you had mentioned the Internet probably being one of the, the best technologies, or, you know, the best developments that have happened. And then, of course, now we've got uh, blockchain technology uh, being the second. And I totally agree with it, where when you look at any kind of decentralized um, technologies, they've always pushed the people forward. We went from, you know, radio to, t we'll look back at the car, from the horse to the car, where people said, oh, the car, you know, it's, it's useless, it's not going to, you know, they had to have three people managing the car, they had to have an engineer and, you know, somebody running in front of it and all that, because you have to kind of use the old system. When the car came out, they were still on dirt roads that had divots in them from the horses and, you know, muddy. And so you bring a new technology out, and it just doesn't kind of work real well because you got to use the old technology to support it. I don't see we're at that stage now a little bit with um, – the Bitcoin industry, the blockchain technology industry, because we're still kind of using those old platforms. But in the next couple of years, we're going to be moving out of that where you had kind of mentioned where we're going to be seeing um, it go totally decentralized, where it's not trackable at all, which, you know, it can be pretty, it's pretty private now from what we're used to for sure. But in the next couple of years, that's going to be the big change. Yeah, I think people need to realize that a lot of what we see in the movies is actually real. In that a lot of those concepts, you know, you look at tech movies back from 30, 40 years ago, and those things have all happened now. And I think a lot of the things that we see today are things that are in process. Like, you know, I mean, incredible things. Uh, but, you know, if you're in this space, in the, in the crypto space for any period of time, you realize how fast these things are changing. And, uh, you know, there's not even a doubt. There's so, and, and the more adoption you get, the more capital that comes into the space. I think 2018 is going to be, the year of the, the crypto uh, venture capital. This is where you're going to see I mean, tens of billions of dollars are going to come into the space and make these things happen. And uh, we're already, you know, moving into the the, the realm of of, uh, of going away from the legacy networks. I, and I think you see things like this: the Chinese they ban the exchanges and they inadvertently create a a price rise that makes people have more confidence in Bitcoin. B it's going to bring all the capital in. And then the next thing you know. These, uh, these, you know, pie-in-the-sky ideas about decentralized trading platforms, which you've heard for some time, you'll probably look up a year from now and they'll be operating. And guess who's going to be the big buyers? Chinese. And now they have satellites. You know, they just launched these satellites so that people can transmit their cryptocurrencies into, into space, or to space, into the satellite system to avoid the Internet. So it won't even necessarily be uh, only used on the Internet. You actually have other channels. And again, you know, just innovation is just being driven at a, at a rapid pace, and the more governments fight back, the more the faster that these, you know, the more you have crises, the faster these these things innovate. Especially when these crises cause the price to go up and 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 create this massive increase in confidence in the system. Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty pretty wild. Now I have I have a theory. I want to get your take on it. That Bitcoin is really going to be probably the reserve of the altcoins. And and you know Andreas is a. I get a lot of my information and uh, I learn a lot from him. And he he said that before that he sees one day where Bitcoin be in the reserve. And also Bob Wood of Nexus Partners. He actually did a little. He he has a little series called Crypto Myths, and he did a little myth on. Uh, where a lot of people believe that cryptocurrencies have no value and they're le unless they're backed by something like a precious metal or gold. And his little uh, concept and his little thinking is, you know, gold might one day uh, be backed by Bitcoin. So what is your take there on those two? Right. Well, people say it has no value. It's just a silly concept. The value is $4,000 because that's what people are paying for it. Uh, that, you know, it's, I mean, I could say the same thing for stocks. Because the, the value of stocks is completely arbitrary. In fact, the, you know, stocks don't cost anything to, quote, print up. They can dilute them into oblivion, whereas you cannot do that with Bitcoin. Uh, so, again, it's in the, the eye of the beholder, so to say something has no value. And now, the dollar, the dollar is a perfect example of it. What's the value of a dollar? There's literally no cost to, to, uh, to creating a dollar, and they create billions of them. Uh, but people say they have value, and, well, people are using them. So yes, they have some value, but the value changes in time. And Bitcoin's value uh, is attributed to the network effect. The more people use it and the more people want it and value it and believe it's secure, the more it's worth. And the more that, that Bitcoin is worth, the more the crypto sector gets worth because people believe that all the technologies surrounding it are going to be more valuable as well. Uh, so I, I mean... You know, this, we, also, this, we also need to look at the miners and there's some uh, some utility there, but if anything, I think general rule, if anything <clears throat> says, hey, we're going to go ahead and back this up with something, let's just say, which that is happening right. in many ways, we already know it's being done with sand, okay? And because the sand is being used as utility, uh, silver, because silver will be used as utility. So if we just look at a general scope of if something were to be backed by anything, it must have usage and utility. I think that's just the general way to look at that, though, if in fact anything were to be backed. And then you look at Bitcoin being backed by the miners, um, which, you know, that's controversial, but um, that is actually, there's a lot of utility behind it in that they're doing the work or proof of work. Okay, so... Something like that, right? right? Well, well, they're they're obviously part of the ecosystem, but the beauty of the, this ecosystem is that all the different parts have value. And as we've just learned by this whole hard fork uh, debate, it's the users that have more value to the, to the network than the miners do. The miners, uh, the miners get paid for what they do handsomely, but they do not make the network. There'll be there'll always be more miners as the price goes up. Well, what's what's most important is the users, but certainly the miners play a role in the in the community, but you know, you mentioned the, the concept of, you know, Bitcoin being backed by gold or, or gold being backed by Bitcoin. I always laugh at those because it's usually pe when people are saying, like, oh, well, Bitcoin will only be worth something if it's backed by gold. It's, you know, it's because they're trying to denigrate it and they're trying to create this scenario in your, this perception that it's worthless and that it needs something of worth. But the fact is, even gold, uh, it's, you know, it's only intrinsic value is how much it costs to get out of the ground and the cost to get gold out of the ground is no different than the cost of, of mining a Bitcoin so they kind of a wash there but again how could you back either one like if, if you, when they say you're gonna back Bitcoin with gold well, okay who's gonna hold the gold uh, the Bitcoin core development team at their houses I mean there's no central Bitcoin corp to do that as if anyone would trust any corp any central corp they certainly don't trust the the U.S. federal government with their, you know, all the gold at Fort Knox that's never audited. There's certainly, so who's going to be doing this? And, and, and you know, conversely, if you're going to back gold with Bitcoin, who's going to hold the Bitcoin? Uh, the gold, World Gold Council? I mean, again, you know, the gold and Bitcoin are two of the few things in the world that are store of value assets that have their own inherent net worth, uh, partly due to the intrinsic value of getting it out of the ground, partly due to the use cases and partly due to the network effect. And really, you know, I mean, I was in gold for 15 years. It was all I would own because I was looking for anything else that would have store value monetary properties until I found Bitcoin. So now you have two. You have crypto and you have gold. 
and there's nothing in the legacy asset world of stocks, bonds, or anything else the government can produce or, or manufacture that has any inherent value other than, uh, other than what the government's printing money are doing to prop them up. Well, okay, yes, and uh, I thought Kelly was going to talk, so I didn't want to talk over her, but it's interesting that, uh, you know, the, the backing of something like, uh, we are seeing so many ICOs now, you know, a lot of them are trash, we understand, but um, a, a lot of them are, are actually doing some kind of usage or utility with their token, um, backing their token up that way in its value, and then we're seeing a lot of these uh, burn back, we're seeing a lot of these... Uh, air dropping uh, these new terms coming in now too with the smart contracts and the DAOs and you know decentralized autonomous organizations where you could just basically just open a DAO overnight by filling out information um, and the technology is done right there for you you don't really have to know much because they're doing it for you so they're backing their token by that product by that production of uh, yeah we'll go ahead and uh, supply you with a DAO and you can you don't really need a corporation. You can just get your employees into the DAO. They're not even employees. Then they're they're actually kind of like shareholders in so, such a way. And people vote to say, let's go ahead and pay uh, Andy today. Um, Andy's going to get paid for the next three months. Andy's going to get paid for a month. He's going to get paid right now because we just voted on it. And we have uh, master nodes or whatever it might be that uh, there's bonds, I guess, these days, and all these things happening out there today <laughs> with not just the currency, but changing everything else all the way down to where do we store our identity and our health records. You know, right? you, it just and one more uh, way to, to show how valuable something is. These, uh, as, we, as uh, I call them now, crypto dividends. Uh, that's actually my friend Adam Meister made the term, you know, what the B cash was, the free money, you'd say airdrop, uh, you're going to have B gold coming out uh, next week, and this as I said with 2X, I believe Ethereum just had its own, or is about to have its own, um, actually two, they had the Omis Go uh, was a airdrop, and now they're going to have another uh, hard fork with a crypto dividend uh, coming up in the next few weeks. The point is, you know, if these things weren't valuable, there's no way that they could spin off something that create that had value from them. I mean, this is this is the definition. This is free markets at work. This is people deciding what they decide has value. And uh, you know, there's no market manipulation involved. There's no government printing money. This is just people deciding that these these current these cryptocurrencies have value. It's uh, something. It's refreshing. It's something I haven't seen in many years. You know, free markets. That's, that's beautiful, that's for sure, and I'm just so glad that we're in this space and moving it forward, and I know all of us that continue to just be here and, and soak up as much as this and, and talk this to people and uh, just keep moving it forward, that's what we need to do. Well, we're almost near the top of the hour. I want to give you a chance, Andy, to uh, let people know where they can find you and follow you, and um, we do appreciate your time today. I know you're busy, busy getting this off and running. Yeah, and I, I appreciate being here. Uh, I think it's my third appearance, and I look forward to the uh, future appearances. And, and uh, as you can imagine, I'm watching um, I'm watching the Nexus uh, growth uh, every day. So I look forward to seeing where we are the next time. But as for me, again, uh, CryptoGoldCentral.com. Uh, I think you're really going to like this website. The the amount of content and the quality of the content is uh, you're not going to find anywhere. I, it, it you know draws from my 15 years in precious metals and 28 years on Wall Street and now uh, two or three hardcore years in, in, in the Bitcoin sector. I've been on all the big Bitcoin shows. I was just on the Bitcoin news with Vortex two weeks ago. I've been uh, on Crypto Scam with Cohen Bays and on Adam Meister's show and Crush the Street and, and you know and I'm on this show now. So I'm, I'm out there and this thing, this, this, this website is really, you know, I'm putting out constantly all kinds of content describing the, the various aspects of the crypto industry. And uh, I, I, I advise you to just go and check it out. I mean, maybe you wait a few days from when I have my, uh, my three, seven day trial up and running. That, that could be as soon as uh, Wednesday or Thursday. But I think you'll really enjoy it. And you can always email me at ahoffman at cryptogoldcentral.com. Like uh, Andy? Yeah. Hey, this is Jeff again. Uh, can we pay with Bitcoin? 
Um, very soon, you're going to be able to pay me with Bitcoin. Uh, but send me an email. We can talk about it. Okay. All right, like and share this video, uh, put your thumbs up on this video, and we'll go ahead and get the CryptoGoldCentral.com down at the bottom so you can just click the link and then subscribe. Right, Andy? Absolutely. Okay. And then, of course, your uh, social media is there, your Twitter handle, blah, blah, all that's there as well? Yes, I'm very, very active, Andy underscore Hoffman underscore CG. Okay, and then there's been, I think, about four different places where we're going to upload this video, not just on YouTube, because we're leaving the YouTube. Everyone is moving over to decentralize peer-to-peer, -peer, and they're coming up like roses. Absolutely. Well, thanks, everyone, for being here today. Great show, Andy. Appreciate it. We look forward to you coming back, and thanks for being out there sharing incredible knowledge in the crypto space um, and um, just more and more intelligent people getting in for sure and um, uh, just uh, taking this energy where it needs to go to um, the people being the power. So we'll have you back on again, Andy, and uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. Love to you all, and aloha.